about introducing yourself first, and then I'll do my little introduction, then I'll go to introduction to Michelle Thomas, and then we'll dive in into the class. So, Oli? <laughs> okay, so, um, hi everybody, my name is Oli Richards. Uh, I um, run a website called IWillTeachYouALanguage.com. I also write books of uh, short stories in different languages and things like that. But my biggest claim to fame is that I was the student on the Korean Michelle Thomas course. So I have some idea what to expect, but I don't speak uh, a word of Polish. Despite, I was telling Lindy, despite living in the UK with millions of Poles here, I don't speak any Polish at all. So I'm really looking forward to, um, to learning a bit today. Very good. <laughs> Lindy? Uh, hello, I am Lindy, Lindy Botis. I am a South African living in Singapore and I work here as a UI UX designer. But on the side, <clears throat> I like to obviously learn as many languages as I can get my hands on. And I run a YouTube channel about language learning and also a blog, lindybotis.com, where I write about language learning journeys. Fantastic. And I also do not speak sorry. any Polish. <laughs> no, I don't speak a word of Polish as well, so I, I don't even know how to say hello. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> we'll rectify that. <laughs> All right, hello, I'm Shannon Kennedy, and I run a site called Eurolinguist. I am also a writer and the head coach for the Flute in Three Months Challenge, and I work at Drops as the language specialist. Thank you very much. So just a brief introduction about myself. So my name is Joanna Watson and I have a degree in Polish philology. And I taught Polish both in Poland and in the UK, including at King's College in London. I'm the author of all Michelle Thomas Polish courses and I'll be teaching this taster lesson today. Great to meet you, thank you. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you as well. So Dzień Dobry, that's Good day in Polish. Dzień dobry. Dzień dobry. Dzień dobry. Dzień dobry. That sounds very good. Shannon? Dzień dobry. Bardzo dobrze. Bardzo. Very. Dobrze. Good. So I'll be praising you. Bardzo. Dobrze. Oli? I've forgotten it now because you said something else. Dzień dobry. <laughs> Dzień dobry. Mm -hmm. So just a little introduction to Michelle Thomas method now. So hello everyone. Thank you to my students, Lindy, Shannon and Oli, who are joining me today. Also a warm welcome to all of you who are watching this lesson during the Polyglot Conference 2020 or later on at some point in the future. We are going to have a short taste a lesson in Polish today using the Michel Thomas method. So the first time I heard of Michel Thomas and his special ways of teaching languages was about 20 years ago when I watched a BBC documentary with Michel himself. After the program, I listened to the recordings of his French courses. His method resonated with me from the very beginning particularly the understanding part of it. This has been important throughout my teaching career as I've always believed that one can't learn properly without understanding. I also like the logical progression of the courses and how effective the method was. More recently, I have had the pleasure of helping Hodder to create the empty Polish courses. In the foundation and intermediate courses, I teach two students to learn Polish for the first time. We focus on the basic structures of the language with enough vocabulary to facilitate learning and to provide a solid foundation. The courses are suitable for complete beginners and for those who wish to refresh their knowledge of Polish. Once you've worked through the courses, you will be ready to progress to more advanced studies. There are two important principles to the MT method. 
Firstly, the learning process should be enjoyable and relaxed. So find the comfortable space and absorb the learning. Don't try to remember anything. There is no need to take notes. There are no textbooks, no drills and no homework. Secondly, those of you who are watching me to teach the students in this taster session are welcome to become an active part of our group and our learning. So please join in and enjoy the session. So the word for it is to. The word for is is yes. Lindy, how do we say it is? To yes. To yes. The word for map is mapa, mapa. So how would you say this is a map, Oli? To jest mapa. To jest mapa. Please notice there are no articles in Polish. There is no A, there is no D. A map or D map is going to be mapa in Polish. To jest mapa. To can also mean this. So to say this is, we say, Shannon? To jest. To jest. This is a bank, Lindy? To jest bank. 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 To jest bank. It's basically the same word in Polish. To jest bank. The word for is was, Oli? Jest. Jest. The word for not is nie. And to say is not in Polish, we say not is. So what will be is not in Polish, Shannon? Nie jest. Nie jest. Oli, this is not a bank? To nie jest bank. To nie jest bank. Please notice that when we say nie jest, the word not and yes are pronounced quite closely. They are pronounced like it was one word. To nie jest bank. To make a question in Polish, we raise a pitch of our voice at the end of the sentence. So once more, to jest bank. Lindy? To jest bank. And now, if you, if you would like to ask a question, is this a bank? Oh, is that just what I said, like raising? So, to jest bank? Exactly. So, we okay. just raise the intonation. We do not change the word order. We raise our intonation. To jest bank? The word for yes is tak. 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 Yes, this is a studio. Shannon? Uh, studio tak. is the same word. Okay. Tak to jest studio. Tak to jest studio. The word for not was... What was the word for not, Oli? Nie. Nie. And the word nie also means no. So what would we say in order to express no, this is not a studio? Oli? Um, nie, to nie jest stu, 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 studio. Studio, it's just flat. Worried about my English really. accent, studio, studio. Don't round, oh, just studio. Nie, so to nie, nie, to nie jest studio. Bardzo dobrze, bardzo, very, dobrze, good. Nie, to nie jest studio. The word for theater is teatr, teatr. There is no th sound in Polish and all the letters are clearly pronounced. Teatr, teatr. Is this not a theater, Lindy? To nie jest teatr. Right. So you said Tony is tat. That's the statement. That's a statement. And okay. if you wanted to ask a question, what do we do? To nie is, this jest not a, is this not a theater? To nie jest teatr. To nie jest teatr. To nie jest teatr. 
Can you see the difference? To nie jest teatr. To nie jest teatr. So we sort of going upward in the last word. Very good. Yes means, what was the word for yes? Um, Shannon? Tak. Tak, tak. Tak can also mean so, thus, like this or like that. So it can have a lot of meaning. It has a lot of meaning. Oli, it is like that. To jest tak. To jest tak. It is not like that, Lindy. To nie jest tak. To nie jest tak. Is this a bank, Shannon? To jest bank. To jest bank. To jest bank. Bardzo dobrze. So we raised the intonation. To jest bank. So that's one way of asking a question in Polish. There is another way. We have a question word, which is czy, czy. So in order to make a question with czy, we place czy at the beginning of the sentence. So what would we say, is this a bank using czy, Lindy? Czy bank, czy... To... Is this a bank? Oh my goodness, czy... I forgot. Don't worry, I am here to help you. So we start from the beginning and that's how the method works. So you go back to what you know and then you build up to what you may be struggling with. So this is a bank as a statement. To jest bank. Great. And now as a question? To jest bank. Great. And to make a question with a question word, we put czy in front. Czy to jest bank? Fantastic. Czy to jest bank? <laughs> we got there. <laughs> Is this a studio, Shannon, using czy, please? Czy to jest studio? Czy to jest studio? Great. Czy... Is this a map, Oli? Can I just check the pronunciation of the t? Is it t, of t or t? T is a C-Z-Y, that's t. the spelling. And C-Z sounds like English C-H, so t, t. t. So the t, t is the tongue if, on, the, on the teeth a bit, t. T, t. t. Mm. So you touch the roof of your mouth with your tongue, t, t. T, to je studio? T. I say church, for example. Ch. Ch, church, church. In Polish. Sorry, in English. Church. Ch. The English word for church, and that's similar sound. Ch. Ch. Am I confusing Ch. you? <laughs> uh, a, a, bit, a little bit, um, yeah, but, okay. it's, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so remember, find a word that you can remember that starts, that has the sound ch in English. I'm, I'm children? Not, I, children, for but example? See, but for me, that's a ch, ch that sounds yes, different to me. Yes, yeah. there is a difference because English ch is a lot softer than the Polish ch. So it's ch. a bit harder, but it ch, is ch. Is, that, is that right? you can have. It's like saying children, but harder. Oh, it's more like a plosive sound. Okay. Because the word, the way I hear what you say, is more like t, t, but it's t. It's more like t. It's like children. I can't hear the difference. Okay. Can you explain the difference? We'll work on that. So. Barely. So yes, it's like, I, mean, I think it probably it probably okay. doesn't help over Zoom, does it? If we were face to face, no, it might be easier right, to, to it's, see. It's not as clear as you would have. So, but just remember the English word sound ch. It's here ch c z y. So ch ch i ch 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 ch. That's better. Yeah. Ch 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 toy studio. Now, t, to is a different from t. Can you hear it over Zoom? It's probably difficult. 
to or to? Mm, to, to jest studio. Tak. Czy to jest studio? And this word czy can also be used in a different context when we want to ask two questions together. So when in English you are aware in English you would use the word for or. So is this a bank or a studio, for example? So how would we say that, Oli? Is this a bank or a studio? Sorry, I was mute. I was mute. <laughs> Could you remind me of the word for um, or again, please? It's the same as a question word. As a question, okay. The so same okay. word is used for or in this situation. Okay. So, czy. Czy. To, to jest bank. Czy studio. Czy to jest bank, czy studio. Lindy, is this a bank or a theater? Czy to jest bank, czy teatr? Tak. Czy to jest bank, czy teatr? How do we say this is a bank? Shannon? To jest bank. To jest bank. And in Polish we can drop is. So we can literally say this a bank. So how would you say that, Shannon? To bank. To bank. The same to the same this is a map, Oli? To mapa. To mapa. Bardzo dobrze. The word for I have is mam. Mam. And you may want to remember this I have a mum. Mam. And the word for I is ja, ja. It's the same word as in English, the other way round. However, in Polish, we do not need to use ja to say I have, because the word mam already contains the letter N at the, uh, M at the end, which means that it is I who have something. So how do you say I have it? Shannon, please. Um, is it to mam or mam to? Right. So the word order in Polish is exactly the same in, in English. So when you want to say I have it, you say mam to. However, if you want to emphasize it, you could say to mam, this I have. So you could move the word to to the beginning and then it means that you are emphasizing the word to. Is that yet clear? Yeah. And to say I don't have, we do not have do or don't. In Polish, we put the verb, we put a word plus not. So we say I don't have, not I have. So how do we say that, Oli? Not I have? I don't have. I think I'm going to need the explanation one more time, please. I'm sorry. Okay. So to say I don't have, we say not, I have. So what is the word for not? Yeah, mum. Great, fantastic. To say I don't have, you say yeah, mum. So what was the word for it, Lindy? Oh. To. There is another it in Polish, which is tego, tego. And we will use the word tego to express things in negative sentences. So if we want to say, I don't have it, we would need to use tego. So Shannon, how would you say, I don't have it? Nie mam tego. Nie mam tego. To, the word for I read is czytam, czytam, czytam. I read it, Oli? T 
Tu t'aimes tôt. Lindy? Tu t'aimes tôt. Tu t'aimes tôt. And... I'm sorry? I was just repeating it. Okay. Tu t'aimes tôt. I think we're struggling a bit with this tu here. So it's... It must be the Zoom because we've never had this. Yeah, I think it's Zoom. Before. I think it's yeah. Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> so just, um, I think the only explanation I can come up with this time, being so stressed, is to go back to this English T. So like church, children, and make it harder. So it's not T, it's more like T. So T, Tam, T, Tam. I am not reading it. How would we say that, Shannon? Nie czytam tego. Nie czytam tego. Please notice that we to say I read is the same as I am reading. Both forms is czytam, czytam. How do we say only I have it, but I am not reading it? It's easy. Um, so I have, I have it. it, but I'm not reading it. Mm -hmm. um, mam to. Mm -hmm. Ale. That's but. Ale. Mm -hmm. Nie czytam to. Okay. So we have two it. One is to. And the other it? Uh, te, tegam. Te go. Te, te go. go. So I have it is mam to mam. because it's a positive sentence. And in the second part, we're going into a negative sentence. So we say, but I am not reading it. So we will need the other it. So once more, I so it's a have it. To so let's check, to is positive and tego is negative, is that right? Exactly. Okay. okay. That. Um, so could you, this, what's the sentence one more time? I have it, but I'm not reading it, is that right? Tak. Yes. yes. Mam to. But. Ale. 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 Nie. Czytam. Tego. Mm -hmm. Tego. Mam to ale nie czytam tego again we say nie with the word nie czytam nie czytam tego how do we say i have a passport and passport is passport passport Wendy? mam passport mam passport the word for i have was shannon Mum. Mum. To say you have, we drop the letter M. So you have will be ma, ma. And when we address a man, we say pan, pan. So how would you say to a man, you have, Oli? Pan ma? Pan ma. Bardzo dobrze. Very good. Pan ma. To address a woman, we say pani. Pani. So, what do we say you have addressing a woman, Lindy? Pani ma. Pani ma. Ma. Pani ma. Once more, please. Pani ma. Pani ma. You have it talking to a woman, Shannon, please. Pani ma to. Pani ma to. Do you have a passport? And we are asking a man here. Do we have a passport, Oli? Pan ma passport. Pan ma passport. We need to raise our intonation. And pan, pan ma passport. Tak. And if you wanted to ask the same question using a question word? 
we'll try to get the right five minutes ago is a long time <laughs> yeah I, 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 I can't remember sorry you know yeah. the, the sounds are different in every language and if you don't learn it early on in life it's difficult sometimes to produce it but it is possible so two is a question word two and the, the question i forgot the question now the question was do you have a passport do you have a passport, do you have a passport? Um, to pan my passport. To pan my passport. Bardzo to, pa, to pan my passport. Jeszcze raz, once more. To pan my passport. To pan my passport. I have is Lindy. Um, mum, mum. And what do you think? And what do we say you have as addressing a man or a woman? Shannon? Panma or um, Panima? Panma or Panima. Very good. And the word for I read was Lindy? Chitam. Chitam. So, what do you think will be the word for? You read when we talk to a man, for example, Oli. Pan czyta. Czyta. Bardzo dobrze. Pan czyta. So again, we drop the last letter M, and we are end we end up with czyta. Czyta. Are you reading it, Shannon? And we are asking a man. Um, czy pan czyta to? Czy pan czyta to? Could you say it again, please? Czy pan czyta to? Czy pan czyta to? The word for what is co? 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 Would you like to repeat that, Oli? Co? 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 co. Like a t, t, z sound? Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, like T, S, or T, Z, so. yeah. Co? 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 So. So, what do we say for what is this, Oli? So, yes, to. Okay. What is this is? To yes. To yes. And what is this? So, to yes. Perfect. So you've corrected yourself. We don't need to change the word order. The word order in a sentence and in questions remains the same. What changes is the intonation. Subject, object, verb. Yes. It's, the word order is basically the same as in English. But we do not change the word order for questions. The word order remains the same. So, toyest, co toyest? That? Interesting. <laughs> okay. How would you ask a woman, Lindy, please? What are you reading? What are you reading? Hmm. Give me ten minutes to think. So <laughs> I don't think you need ten minutes. Is, so? <laughs> Maybe ten seconds. <laughs> <laughs> what is so? And then for a woman, it's pani. So pani. Chita. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm missing something. What are you no, reading? No, you're not missing anything. Oh, okay. So once more, it's a question. So what are you reading? So, Pani Chita. Okay, because we have a question word, we don't need to raise our intonation. The question word, co, actually indicates that it's a question. Okay. So no need to raise your intonation. It's different with the word, the question word to, because that's an open question. It's a yes, no question. So the intonation there is rising. However, in this question and any other questions using question words, you don't need to raise your intonation. Because there you have a question word and that's obvious to anybody that you are asking a question. So once more, what are you reading? Czy pani czyta? That would be 
Are you reading it? O, co? Co pani czyta? Co, co pani czyta? Very good. What do you have? We are asking a man, Oli. What do you have? Co pan ma? Co pan ma? And again, asking a woman, Shannon, what do you have? Co pani ma? Co pani ma? And for me is de la menie. De la menie. What do you have for me? We ask a woman, Lindy, what do you have for me? Co pani de la menie? What do you have for me? What so? Mm -hmm. Pani ma. Tak. De la menie. Perfect. Would you like to say it again? Co pani ma de la menie? Bardzo dobrze. Co pani ma de la menie? De la menie. Co de la menie. Talking to a man, you have it. Shannon? Pan ma to. <laughs> Pan ma to. I think you lost. Uh, I forgot to unmute. Yeah. I can yeah. hear you for a second. Yeah. I forgot to unmute. Could you say it again, please? Pan ma to. Pan ma to. Do you have it? Asking a woman, Oli. Pani ma to. Pani ma to. Oh. We'll be practicing a question word. <laughs> Keep forgetting that question word. Tu. 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 Pani ma to? It's tu. 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 The spelling of the word is C Z Y. And C Z is pronounced similar, a bit harder to C H entirely. So try to join them and say tu. Tu. That's better. Tu. 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 A bit harder? Tu. 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 Mm -hmm. That was almost tu. perfect. Tu. 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 Pani ma to? Great. That was good. <laughs> you see, it's all a matter of practice. We are, we have different sounds, so we need to get used to them. But you were great here. So once more, please. <laughs> tu. Pani ma to? Czy pani ma to? And talking to a woman, you don't have it. Shannon? Pani nie ma. It. To. Ne, a, tega. 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 Great. Fantastic. You corrected yourself. So once more, please, the whole sentence. Uh, pani nie ma tego. Pani nie ma tego. What do you have? Oli, asking a man, please. What do you have? Co pan ma? Co pan ma? The word for it was, Lindy. To. To. And the other it? Tego. Tego. And the word for what? So. So. And what do you think will be the other what? which we will need to ask a negative questions. So, to, tego, co? So, go? So, go? I'm... So, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll help you again. I'm just asking you to guess. Yeah. But, you know, it's fine. We are learning. So, to, tego, co? Cego. Cego. That should be. And that's what it is in some dialects in Polish. But in standard Polish, it became czego. 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 So we have this unfortunate sound that we're struggling a bit at the moment, but we'll get there. So czego. 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 So this czego, we will need in a sentence, for example, what do you not have? So how do you think you would ask that, Shannon? What do you not have? And you are asking a woman. 
Um, czego pani nie ma? Czego pani nie ma? Great. What was for me, Oli? I've lost it. Dla, dla, dla mnie, dla, dla mnie, dla mnie, dla mnie, dla mnie, dla mnie, dla mnie, and to say why, we will be saying for, what, but we will need the other what, so what do you think it will be, so for, is de la mm -hmm. and the other what okay lindy chego chego so de la chego that's the word for why in polish de la chego for what but we are using the other what there is a lot of things that I'm introducing at the moment, but unfortunately, you have to have the building blocks to go through it. And I found that by introducing this, the other it and the other what, students get used to it. And then it becomes normal, because if you try to delay learning difficult things at the beginning, you will go on and you won't be able to say very much. So we are doing very well. So asking a man, why do you not have it for me, Shannon? Dla czego pan nie ma dla mnie? It. Oh, um, tego dla mnie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So have a look at the whole sentence and please say it again. Why okay. do you not have it for me? Dla czego pan nie ma um, tego de la mnie. Bardzo dobrze. Fantastic. Very good. Dlaczego pan nie ma tego dla mnie? Like this or like that was... Lindy? Did we learn that? I must have forgotten. It's the same Briefly. word of... It's the same word as yes. Oh, um, talk. Tak. Tak. So how do we say it is like that, Oli? To jest tak. Bardzo dobrze. To jest tak. Why is this like that, Shannon? <laughs> Dla czego um, to jest tak? Dlaczego to jest tak? The word for have, as in you have, was, Oli? Ma. Ma, ma, ma. And the word for I have was? Mum. Mum. The word for is, is? Yes. Yes. So what do you think, this is a question to everybody, not putting anybody on the spot, what do you think will be the word for I am? So, ma, mum, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So what um. yes, and when we adding something to create I form. Yes, them. Yes, them. Great. So we have we add the M and because it would be difficult to say yes them without any vowels in the middle, so we put E, which is the helping vowel in Polish. The letter E in English and the letter E in Polish. So I am is yes them. Yes, then. The word for ready is gotowy. Gotowy. That's a little help for you. If you find a Polish word too long and too difficult to pronounce, just say it bit by bit and then join it together. So gotowy. And a little reminder, imagine you just got off the bus and you are ready for shopping. Got off. Gotowy. So how would you say, as a man, I am ready, Oli? Jestem gotowy. Bardzo dobrze. Jestem gotowy. Jestem gotowy. 
And when you say jestem gotowy, the form for ready will depend in Polish on who is speaking. So a man will say jestem gotowy, a woman will say jestem gotowa. So the ending will be a. In English, a in Polish. So how do we say I am ready, Lindy, as a woman? Jestem gotowa. Jestem gotowa. And there is a third ending, which is for neuter forms. So in order to say it is ready, we will need the neuter form because it is neuter. And the ending for the neuter form is e. E. Polish e, English e. So how do we say, Shannon, it is ready? Jest gotowe. It is ready. To jest gotowe. To jest gotowe. Bardzo dobrze. And talking to a man, how do we say, Lindy, you are ready? Pan jest gotowe. I forgot the first ending. Gotowy. V. V. Gotowy. I. This is the letter v. Y pronounced I in Polish. So pan jest gotowy. Pan jest gotowy. Tak. And talking to a woman, Oli? Pan jest gotowa. Pani jest gotowa. Fantastic. And once more, it is ready, Shannon? To jest gotowy. To jest gotowe. Are you ready? Asking a woman, Lindy? Pani jest gotowa? Pani jest gotowa? Wait, do I need a question word? Well, it depends on you. You can use it or you don't have to. But so I could in say... Short, in short sentences like that, you can choose. In longer sentences, we tend to use the question word. Oh. But in short sentences, it's up to you. It's your preference. Okay. So, are you ready? Asking a woman. Czy pani jest gotowa? Wait, no, Asking no, no rising, right? In no rising tone? You can raise a bit. Because okay. oh, right, it is a right. question because word. And as okay. we said previously, with this czy, yes, no question, we do tend to rise our intonation. The rising is more prominent if you don't ask a question word, but with a question word, most Polish people would raise their intonation slightly. So you still raise your intonation in this question. And asking a woman, are you ready, Oli? Pani jest gotowa? Pani jest gotowa? Question. Pani jest gotowa? Mm -hmm. Or with a question word? Czy pani jest gotowa? Czy pani jest gotowa? I am not ready, Shannon. As a woman. Uh, ja nie jestem gotowa. Ja nie jestem gotowa. By using yeah, you're emphasizing that it is I who is not ready rather than somebody else. But if you just wanted to say in a neutral way, you can just say, nie jestem gotowa. You don't need to say I. It is ready, Lindy? To jest gotowe. To jest gotowe. It is not ready, Shannon. To Nie jest gotowe. Mm -hmm. Why is it not ready, Oli? Why, why, why? <laughs> that is why, for why? what, the other what. I, so yeah, this one is... This, this word it just doesn't go into my head. <laughs> it will. You see, the mania, is that mania, we're having mania. a little taster, so we yeah. will be finishing soon. Because when you have a full course, you go through this again and again and again, yeah, sure, and it sure. sinks in. Yeah. But within 20 minutes, you can't expect yourself to be perfect. And nobody. I mean, lots of words have sunk in. Actually, there's, there's, there's yes. a couple which just like just. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and that's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of them. So what is why? The yeah, Lachego. Why is it not ready yet? De la Chego, is that, is that what it was? Can you, can you say it again? Fantastic, great. De, de, la, Chego? de la Chego, to nie jest gotowe. Bardzo dobrze, bardzo dobrze, very good. So I think we'll finish soon. So if we just say once more, I am ready. As a man, Oli? I am. Um, I am ready. What is thanks. it? Is yes. It is? Yes. Ah, uh, yes. So, them, yes. Them. Yes. Them. Yes. Them. Yes. Them. Goto. Ve. Yes. Them. Goto. What's the ending? Goto. Ve. Goto. Goto. goto ve. E. Goto. Ve. E. 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 Yes. yes. Them. Goto. Ve. Yes. Them. Goto. Ve. So, on the subject of accent in Polish. Normally what we accent is the second syllable from the last. So in okay. the word gotowy it will be go to vy. So gotowy. We gotowy. stress okay. tovy. Gotowy. Like a bit like English. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And as a woman, Shannon, I'm ready. Yes, I'm gotowa. And Lindy? Yes, I'm gotowa. Yes, I'm gotowa. We are all ready to learn a bit more. Unfortunately, we need to finish now. So just a quick question. What did you think about this? <laughs> how did you like the method yeah. and how was it different, for example, Oli, for you to learn Korean and Polish? Um, well, they were both completely new to me. I think what's, what I found was really interesting was when I learned Korean, So the thing with with with, with us, with me, myself and uh, Lindy and, and Shannon, we've all studied lots of languages. So I, I, I'd be curious whether you guys found this as well. But with with Korean and with Polish, every new thing we learn, or every little grammar point or word order, I'm like, oh, it's like it's like that language, or it's like that, or that word, that thing sounds like that language. So I kind of feel like I'm just putting blocks together almost with these with 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 what with what uh, what, what we've learned here. Like the words are new. But the concepts are i'm kind of borrowing them from from different languages yeah. but i would say that just on the on the zoom format i i, I find it quite difficult to pick up the um yeah. the pronunciation yeah. when i compare it to when we did korean we were in a studio it's totally silent of sat course. one meter yeah. apart um and yeah. so it's quite a quite a different a different experience yes and then because we're all sort of sitting quite a distance from a microphone then obviously that doesn't sound so clear as it would be in live situation i think it's more because it, zoom zoom it just cuts off certain frequencies so what you yeah. might hear in um you know from from from, from the real sound waves coming at you you get yes. you just what you receive is totally different from mm. from um i mean it's mostly exactly. fine but there's a few words like the like the the, <laughs> the one that i, I got it's wrong just all the time. one sound i think that this ch sound that seems to be a bit challenging at the moment but i think you are getting there and i think shannon what did you think about the class and the taster uh i have to say that it's the similar to what ollie said it's as you were sharing everything i'm going okay that's like this language okay that's like this language the one thing that really surprised me was um the word order so when it's like to to yes I was like, what, what? Because I'm so used to reversing the verb in the subject in like every language. And when it was the same, I was like, okay, that's going to be a hard one to remember. I'm not going to want to do that. <laughs> but yeah, um, it, it was definitely interesting. It's, I'm so used, I'm a note taker. So like doing this without notes, I'm like anxious the entire time. <laughs> I think it's a different way of learning because when you start learning by hearing things you learn you in you you use a different part of your brain so you just have to get used to this situation and writing something it's different as well so yes how about you, you really really, ha really have to, to concentrate a yes. lot <laughs> <laughs> and i think you speak croatian shannon am i right yes 
Is it very different from Polish? Or did um, you find some helpful bits to it? It's the it's kind of similar, like yeah, is the same. Um to mm. read is cheetam instead of um, you know, the vowel pronunciation is a little bit different. Um there's some similarities, um, like de la menye is like more like Russian, because it would be zamene yes. in Croatian, but it there were yeah. some similarities. <laughs> And Lindy, what did you think? How did you find the session? It was tricky. I have not learned any European languages for a very long time. Okay. So many <laughs> different sounds, and I found myself maybe having a Japanese or a Chinese uh, pronunciation for some of the words like chu. I thought it's like the Chinese like chu or to, like the Japanese to particle. So I had to try and cut that out. Like Shannon, I'm also a note taker. So I was trying to see how can I like mentally picture these words. So I, I really had to tune in my ears. And I think I, I am quite auditory as well. So it's it's easy to learn by repeating sounds a lot and a lot, mm. but definitely squashed into a small time frame. I, I yes. felt like I first needed to solidify the first few minutes. And then I think once we got to the passport word, I was like, oh no, <laughs> so much information. <laughs> yeah, but it was great. Thank you for teaching us. <laughs> You're very welcome. Thing. It's th yeah, there sure. is a lot to take in at the very beginning because that's how the course was constructed. And as I said, later on you sort of go back and back and back to all the things. So you practice them by repeating, and you eventually internalize it. And that was the idea behind Michelle's method: that you absorb the knowledge, and it stays with you. And he, because he was Polish himself. He was, yes. I wonder, I wonder yes. if he ever taught or if he, if he ever considered teaching Polish to anybody yeah. using this method. I'm sure he did, or maybe he didn't find anybody in America at the time wanting to learn Polish. I don't know, but I'm sure he did. So it's a shame that he didn't do it, but, you know, I tried to do my best. <laughs> yeah, well, you've done a fantastic job. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So what I like... to... yeah, sorry, Lindy. Oh, what I like is that it's not like a traditional lesson where you start by, hello, my name is, how are you? Where is the bus stop? And one, two, three, four, five, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I think it's great that you can already learn how to formulate sentences. This is, this is not, what yes. are you doing? What are you not doing? I yeah. think that's, that's a good base for grammar. Yeah. yeah, so my idea was that I introduced the structures and try to use the vocabulary that you know already so you don't focus on the vocabulary, you don't try to remember, and then you can just focus on the structure. And there is a lot of knowledge at the beginning, but that's how we were sort of building up the blocks. And I also like doing, like I said in the introduction, that I like people to understand it. So the way I was get, asking you to guess or have a guess, whether when we say to, tego, co, czego, or mam, ma, yes, yes them so you try to sort of understand from one bit to another and then it stays with you when you have a word and you you see a word in a dictionary and then you can you know what to do with it how to create the i form for example i on the when we did the korean course it was i think five days straight so imagine this kind of just like back to back for five days mm. that's to create the whole course as uh, so it was super it was incredibly tiring but um, what you were saying about the the um, the grammar constructions and things like that, we I had this amazing feeling at the end of the of the Korean course that okay, we didn't know that many words because there's not just you know you can't learn no. that so many words in that time frame. But but we all um, said those of us who were learning that we learned so much grammar in that time and practiced the structure so many times that we thought that given given enough time to sit and think, we could have said almost anything we wanted in Korean, yes. like with, with the, with pretty good grammar after yes. just like four or five days of, of, of doing that from, from going over the, those, yeah. the, that yeah. grammar over and over again. So it was really interesting to learn that much in such a um, yeah. short, short space of time. I have to, and I think that's the sorry, Simon. Yeah, I have to drop off. I just wanted to say thank you so sure. much for the lesson. It was very interesting. You're very welcome. Thank you very much. Nice to see everyone. See you. Bye bye. bye, -bye.